Hey guys, it's Nate, AKA The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. This video is a lot different from what you normally see on this channel, but today this video is for you. Yes, you who has watched my YouTube channel for any length of time during the past five years that we have been uploading YouTube videos. To get us to this point, we just surpassed the 100,000 subscriber milestone in the past month on this channel and I'm super thankful for all of you guys for watching these videos and as a part of me saying thank you to you guys today I want to do a few things first of all we have a giveaway planned at the end of the video and a couple of cool announcements to share with you guys about things going forward for the foot account but also I want to share a little bit of my story with you what was life like for me before this YouTube channel before I played ultimate team because I haven't even played ultimate team for 10 years I know some of you guys have played this game longer than I have I want to share a bit about that and also how I got to 100,000 subscribers because I know some of you maybe want to create content of your own or start a YouTube channel of your own. How does it look like this day and age? How did I start? How to get to 100,000 subscribers? Something that I never even planned to say that I would be doing. I want to share some of my experiences and maybe that can inspire some of you guys in your own journeys as well. So without further ado, let's start with a couple of cool, I guess, things related to me and sharing a little bit more about my story, especially how I got into Ultimate Team. Like, I did not grow up with football, soccer, we'll refer to it as both in this video. I did not grow up with that sport being the most prominent thing in my life at all. Of course, here in America, there's so many different sports. I actually grew up playing mostly basketball. That was my passion, that was my sport, especially being from the state of Indiana. A lot of you guys ask where I'm from. I'm from the state of Indiana. I've lived in this state for my entire life, and predominantly the northern part of the state as well is where I was born and raised. Um, and, you know, soccer is not massive around here. It's just kind of like another sport. You know, you've got basketball, baseball, American football, soccer, so many other sports that you can play. And it really, as a lot of people talk about, uh, pulls uh, a lot of the athletes in different directions instead of football, soccer, just being the main sport. Now, I did play a little bit when I was younger. I think I was like, I don't even know, like, eight to 12 years old. I think I played some like youth league soccer. I don't know, I don't remember loving it. I don't remember being cracked uh, at all, but I do remember just loving being outside and playing sports. And that was the thing that I think really drew me to playing that um, and being active in, in, in total. But I played basketball. That was kind of my main sport. The high school that I went to, uh, some I don't know if you guys call it primary school, grades nine through 12, they did not have soccer as a sport. It was a smaller school, and that's actually not that uncommon here in the States to not have that sport for your, your school team. So I wasn't able to play that. So instead, I ran cross country and track, and I played basketball. And that's kind of my story with football. Like, I didn't grow up playing it. I didn't dislike it, but I didn't really follow the sport as well because I was just, you know, entertained by the other sports, and I was interested in some of those that were going on at the same time. I really didn't f follow football and become a fan of Tottenham Hotspur until I was in college, and I'll touch on that a little bit. But speaking of the high school years, I got to tie in video games as well. I grew up playing video games, um, but I played a lot of sports games, right? Really, the first video game that I grinded a ton was Madden 04, and I played it on PC um, with a controller. And then we had a Wii after that, and I played a lot of other sports games. Like 2K on the Wii is kind of fun because, you know, it's, it's kind of active, but, you know, that's some of the games I played growing up. I played MLB uh, 2K as well, but it was mostly just sports games. Never FIFA. Never FIFA. I um, was more interested in NBA and Madden and some of those. Uh, but the first video game that really kind of like piqued my interest to a like a degree that I would grind, like hardcore grind, it was actually a mobile game. It was Clash of Clans. I don't know if you guys ever played Clash of Clans, but that game for me was like where I realized that video games can be like a legit um addiction maybe but also just like you can really grind video games meet a lot of really cool people that have the same passion in the video game as you do um and also just have a blast doing it and also make money off of it like i kind of am reluctant to admit this and i mentioned it before in the stream but i played clash of clans so much that i built my account up high enough to where i could sell it online this was back in like 2014 I played Clash of Clans, got to a Town Hall level 9, maxed it all out, and I sold my account on eBay for like $320, and that was my first ever experience like making money off of video games, and I think something clicked there for me that was like, okay, 
people love video games this much to pay 300 bucks for my account so they don't have to go through all the work to getting it themselves and they already have something good. Like, okay, there's something here with video games and I like that. I ended up selling more Clash of Clans accounts, uh, a couple more, helped my buddy sell his for $500. It was crazy, right? It's kind of the equivalent of like buying FIFA coins now that I think of it. That's definitely like a little shady, probably against TOS for Clash of Clans. So don't ban me Clash of Clans, but yeah, I did that. Um. But in college is when I was uh, kind of enjoying my Clash of Clans life. But college, like I mentioned, was the first time that I also was uh, playing FIFA. It was actually the college that I went to. One of my teammates on the cross country team got me into playing FIFA because we were hanging out one night. And he goes, hey, bro, let's let's play a game of FIFA. And I was like, bro, I've never played. I mean, I don't really follow soccer that much. Um, I'm more of a basketball and an American football fan. But he was all about Ultimate Team. But we started out playing just head-to-head, -head, right? I feel like that's how every FIFA player starts out. Just normal online season or head-to-head -head in kickoff mode. I remember using Ivory Coast, FIFA 14. It was during, uh, it was August of 2014. So it was like right before FIFA 15 came out was when I played my first FIFA game ever. And I fell in love, man, with like that night. I was like, this is unbelievable. So August of 2014, I played my first ever game of FIFA. September of 2014, I am buying an Xbox. I am going to the midnight release to get a disc copy of FIFA 15 to play my first ever FIFA Ultimate Team. Uh, and I went straight into that game mode after he showed me his Ultimate Team. I was freaking hooked and I love it. So that's where I started playing FIFA and playing Ultimate Team. Um, I actually had a different name. I wasn't the foot accountant. It was Nate Dog Mac. My name, some people called me Nate Dog is a nickname in college. And I remember when I thought of my gamer tag, I was like, Nate Dog's my nickname. And I looked over to my desk and I had my Mac laptop sitting there. I was like, Nate Dog Mac, there's my gamer tag. So <laughs> that was my gamer tag. I don't know if you guys like remember that or if any of you guys are around long enough because I used to stream under the name of Nate Dog Mac as well in FIFA 18. Uh, but from FIFA 15 to FIFA 18, I really didn't make too many YouTube videos or like think about making content. There was a one-off here or there. If you go on the YouTube channel right now and sort by oldest, you'll see some cringe videos. What's up boys, it's Nate Dog Mac. Welcome back to the channel. We have a sweet pack opening today. First time of FIFA 18. But I've kept them there just because I think it's really cool to show your journey from like where you start and kind of what forms your passion of making videos and like learning along the way. I think it's, we'll get into this when I talk about YouTube stuff, but just like pressing the record button and like posting it, not trying to be like top tier quality right away is super duper important when you're starting to make YouTube videos because everybody starts you know, at this point and then, and then, you know, grows from their experiences. But, um, those videos, I did a couple of player reviews, couple of rewards videos. I didn't even trade that much to be completely honest. Like I think FIFA 17 was where I really started to care about the market. Um, and I didn't really watch a lot of YouTube or Twitch as well. I remember watching my first ever Twitch stream for FIFA. I think it was FIFA 16, but I barely paid attention to it after that was I watched Inception and I watched Castro. Um, those are the two guys that I really watched for, you know, just short amounts of time. Then in FIFA 18, I started watching Elite Foot Trading. He got me into the market a little bit more, but I, my market kind of desire started on my own a little before that in FIFA 17. Um, I had tried to trade a few times before, but I put on FIFA points maybe like three or four times a year in FIFA 15. 16 and 17 and I was like I'm not getting anything from this I would open the packs and when I put on FIFA points I mean like I've probably spent like $20 like three times in each of those FIFA so like very few um, and I realized like I'm getting nothing from this the packs are not good <laughs> what's changed and uh, I, I didn't get my value back from it I thought in like entertainment and hype or also like coins in the game so that kind of got me into trading a little bit because I was like I'm gonna try to make coins myself because I know supply and demand I'm an accounting student that's what I went to college for actually in accounting uh, I, I worked in public accounting we'll talk about that a little bit later too but so that's kind of what got me into trading, watching Nick RTFM a little bit in the early days as well, but more so just like supply and demand and trying to stay ahead of the content and investing that just, I loved that sort of thing. And um, it makes sense because my family that I've grown up in, um, my dad owns a business with his brother and they've owned that for um, 
basically all of their adult lives. And I think I just have kind of like entrepreneurship and like business like inside of me. And it just makes sense a little bit um, growing up in that way, hearing them talk a lot about the business and running things and stuff like that. Like I have that kind of ingrained. I think I had a little bit of that untapped in my mind. I didn't know what it was at first, but it connected to Ultimate Team with the trading and, and with the market. So yeah, FIFA 18 is where I really started to trade a lot more. And it was during FIFA 18 as well that I started streaming. Um, I know a couple of you guys from the stream were around during that time, but I started streaming off of my Xbox to like two viewers, three viewers. And I was in a dorm room with other college bros being loud. And I was telling like, bros, like I'm trying to stream, like be quiet, you know? Um, and all I did was I would play foot champs. I would trade a little bit on the market. One of my most infamous, actually most famous, not infamous. One of my best clips ever was from one of my streams in FIFA 18, where I sniped foot birthday Ronaldo for 158 K. It was like two in the morning. I should have been asleep. It was definitely somebody who like drunk listed their Ronaldo or something. And instead of listing him at 1.5 mil, they forgot uh, some zeros and listed him at 158k. 545. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, boys! Oh, shoot! Oh my gosh! Holy cowboys, did you just witness this? That was kind of my beginning of getting into trading. And then once I graduated college in 2018, I moved back home with my accounting degree and a passion for FIFA. Uh, that I was playing a lot during college. And uh, I moved home and I was like, you know what? There, I might be able to start making YouTube videos more consistently. And I knew kind of what I had to do if I wanted to do that. I knew I had to have a PC and a setup and get a webcam and a mic. And I had, this, I had these ideas. I had a plan kind of formulating in my head. Um, and that's where really the foot accountant was born right there because I went from just being Nate Dog Mac, I knew that I needed something that was related to Ultimate Team. I saw other guys like Run the Foot Market or all these guys with FIFA or Foot in their name. And I was like, man, that is kind of like marketing in its own right. If you have a Foot in your name, people realize and they know what you're about. Like a guy named Nate Dog Mac, like what's he doing? Trading on Ultimate Team sort of thing. So I rebranded to the Foot Accountant um, and I had a setup. I have a, a picture of my first setup. It was simple and super simple. It was, you know, cheap gear. The PC actually, I built myself. I did research for like a month, watched a bunch of YouTube videos, used PC part picker. Um, it was like grown up Legos. It wasn't that hard. Some people were like, building a PC is crazy hard. If you do research and um, watch YouTube videos, like, You'll be fine. You'll be able to do it just fine. So I did that um, and that's how I really started. I started making YouTube videos and man, I got to tell you guys, nobody would know this, but making those YouTube videos back in FIFA 19 at the start was a grind, man, because at the time I had moved home from college and I was living with my parents while I was my full time job was starting and I was waiting on one of my buddies to buy a house and then I moved in with him eventually and a couple other guys. But I was living at home just after college. Um, and the internet was woeful. Like I'm talking one megabyte per second upload speed. I would record a YouTube video and set it to upload overnight. And the videos were like less than a gigabyte, like in length. Cause a 20 minute video was like, I don't know, I'm like 750 megabytes. Right. And it wouldn't upload overnight. So I'd have to copy the file onto a thumbstick, like a thumb drive. And I would take the thumb drive into work. Don't tell my former employer this. I would take a USB drive into work and upload YouTube videos in FIFA 19 for the first basically six months that I ran YouTube. I would upload those videos at work from my work laptop because the internet there was fast enough. Crazy. War a grind from TFA. But that's kind of what it took for me at the beginning to get things going. I was motivated to make daily or almost daily videos just because I saw how the market was moving. Um, and I saw like just the content really pick up. I don't know if you guys remember Future Stars. I feel like Future Stars in FIFA 19, right after Team of the Year, was the promo that changed Ultimate Team content to what it is now. Like the whole daily live content, like it was daily, I guess, before that but it really went crazy after that. 
And that's where I think just content itself just changed a lot in this game. And we got way more SBCs than we ever used to. If you remember the days of FIFA 16, 17, and 18, they would drop like two different SBCs a week. That's it. And then, you know, maybe a pack here or there. SBCs weren't even a thing in FIFA 16. Uh, that was what, FIFA 17 when they came in? So content has changed a ton. And I feel like I've changed a ton as well as we've kind of uh, been making YouTube videos and evolved and, you know, started streaming a lot more. So as I was living in my parents' house, I obviously couldn't stream. And this is where I'll probably get into a little bit more of like uh, the zero to 100K in my journey with YouTube and stuff is um, I was able to move in with my buddies uh, in a house that had fast enough internet in 2019 in June. As some of you guys may remember that was kind of like my return to streaming. I didn't stream for a year after I graduated college because I, I physically couldn't. The internet wasn't good enough. Um, and that was the end of FIFA 19 and the start of FIFA 20 when I started streaming again. I, I'll never forget it. Um, I was maybe averaging like, I don't know, 100 viewers, 200 viewers because I had a, a YouTube channel. I think I had like, I don't know, maybe like a couple thousand subscribers on YouTube by that point. And people knew me from that and they knew we did a lot of market. I tweeted a lot. I was active in other people's streams. So like I was kind of trying to build a name for myself in that way. Um, but in the summer of 2019, right before FIFA 20, um, I got a raid from EA. Like EA Sports was doing a stream for a pro van. They raided my channel. Um, and it was like, I know some of you guys uh, have stuck around since then. Like that was the first time that you, you found me. And that was crazy. Like I'll never forget that. Having like 100 or 200 viewers and then all of a sudden having 25,000 viewers was unbelievable. Uh, yeah, so I'll never forget that. That was pretty crazy, but kind of going into FIFA 20 is where things really started to pick up for me and realize like, okay, this might be something that I can do. Like I was doing it on the side, like all this while after I graduated college, I was working my accounting job, uh, starting in the mornings at usually like 7 a.m. I would get up and go to work and I would be working until five or six. Um, usually I get home at like six, 6.30 in the evening. But of course, during busy season for accountants, you know, it gets crazy and it was definitely crazy for me. Um, there were days, this it was really grindy, FIFA 20 and kind of FIFA 21 as well. It was so grindy that I was, I was working my real life accounting job at a public accounting firm uh, from 7 a.m. to like 6 p.m. and during busy season, like 9 p.m. Like it was literally like 10 to 12 hour days. And then I would come home, but I would be like dead tired from work. But then all of a sudden, like a switch would flip and I would be so excited to sit down at my setup after eating dinner and doing nothing else, sit down on my setup and start talking about the market and playing the game and getting excited about how am I making coins or the content that was coming. Leaks weren't as big of a thing back then, but like trying to figure out what the content was, was such a massive thing still as it is today. So that's where it was really, really a grind. Um, and during that time, like, you know, I was making the daily YouTube videos. I really enjoyed that grind because the content was coming out faster and faster every single day uh, as it does now. And then uh, I was streaming like twice a week. Some of you guys may maybe remember the late night streams. Like I would stream uh, like late night slot, honestly. Like it was 7 p.m. Eastern time to like nine or 10 o'clock. And I kind of had that two hour window there, three hour window to stream because after that I had to go do my YouTube video. And then it was like, I gotta go to bed because I got work in the morning. I sacrificed a ton. Um, and that would be one thing uh, that I would mention like, as we kind of put in some like zero to 100K, building your audience and starting to think about building a YouTube channel and things that that means. Like people talk about consistently consistency and they talk about like grinding in the early days when you're creating content. But like, it is so true. Like those, those days of me grinding the work days and then coming home and doing my, the YouTube videos and stuff and the streams a couple times a week, that was a grind. And looking back now, I realized how tired I was. There were mornings where I would go to work at the accounting firm. Don't know how I didn't drink coffee. I've just never really drank coffee, but um, I was like falling asleep at the computer, man, doing these audits at, at companies and I'd be out there with the audit team and I'd be like falling asleep, but like checking my web app, you know, see if I got sales and stuff on the computer, on the web app. So like it was a grind, but it was so worth it. And it was worth it because I knew that I, I had a passion for it and I had a plan as well. A lot of people say like, oh, you gotta grind, you gotta put out a lot of content and then you'll, you'll find success. I think 
one of the themes that I've noticed about myself and my ability to get to the 100,000 subscriber mark and where we are today is I think it's taken a lot of planning and also grinding and execution. Like I would still say what I do right now as a content creator, making the YouTube videos every single day is very grindy. Like um, it definitely is not a super fun schedule. Um, like right now, a day in the life for TFA is I wake up at like 8 a.m. Most days, some days when I work out, it's earlier. I I'd usually try not to work too much until like 10 a.m. or 11 a.m., which is when I get ready for the stream. Um, but then I'm streaming from like 12 until 4, working another hour after that to get clips sorted, message people to get stuff sorted for the video, make think up tweets, think up other pieces of content like TikToks and YouTube Shorts. And then uh, I'm not working then for usually another three or four hours. And then the late night, so like 9 p.m. my time to like midnight, another usually two and a half to three hour stretch in there is when I sit down, record the YouTube videos and do some other pieces of content in there. So it's kind of the same hours as a full-time job, but you guys know how the internet is, right? And you know how this game is too, right? Like leaks could happen. Um, something on Twitter, market movements could happen at any sort of time. So it's like, Work, work is always on, you know, and I have to be very careful sometimes about um, not working all the time. That's the biggest thing I have to work on is time management and like work workload management. This is why I, I don't stream seven days a week and sometimes I only stream five. Um, and I have to be very careful as well, like in the evenings to like put away my phone and like just be careful with stuff because I don't want to get too burnt out. And I think that's one of the things that's enabled me to um, be super consistent over the long term of these last few years is that I set parameters and I set boundaries. And I would encourage you guys to do that as well with the game and with other things in life, like set parameters and boundaries so that you're not just like going crazy the entire time because you will burn out and you'll, you'll run out of, um, of, I guess like juice, I guess you could say, but yeah, consistency and, um, constantly learning as well, constantly learning about, um, what are the best moves for me to make constantly watching the landscape of social media when things change like this is a this is the best example i can give you guys is when short form content and tiktok took off in 2020 i made a tiktok right away um and i started posting videos there and i had some decent success with it um but it really hasn't been until like this last year where i've started posting a lot more on there um and really like with the times changing and with short form content being so important, like me investing with part of my business in editors to get clips from the stream and separate clips that I create posted there is one of the ways that I've learned and evolved and constantly watching like, um, how is the social media game moving and what videos are uploading that do well? What are the algorithms pushing and stuff like that? You may have noticed it with my YouTube titles and how they've changed over the years at the end of my youtube videos for the first couple of years i always would have like fifa 21 ultimate team or fifa 22 ultimate team at the end and now it's more so very simple thumbnails right not crazy as many cards you can fit on a thumbnail as you used to um and now it's more like simple and it's usually as short of title as i can come up with a title that makes you think and ask questions or maybe get excited and get hyped and it's that's all of like what I would call maybe the game side of social media. But that that part to me is where I've learned the most and had the most fun. Like what makes somebody see this video and, and wanna watch it and wanna click on it. And and then it's up to me after that to deliver, you know, insightful, informative, helpful content. Uh, and that's, that's my goal for my channel, at least. For other people, it's entertainment, it's hype, it's laugh, it's funny, stuff like that. For me, it's a lot more information help because that's again i haven't spoken on it too much but that is what really drove me to start this youtube channel from the beginning was i wanted to help people make coins because i figured out okay i can learn to make coins this way i learned the market in fifa 18 through a number of different ways from losing a lot of coins to also making a lot of coins and i've been constantly learning the market ever since like with ea adding in new things every year it always is changing but that's what I wanted. That was the whole basis of me starting this YouTube channel. And part of the reason I planned it out to look like this is I wanted to help you guys make coins. That's my number one goal. Even to this day, like there's times on the stream where I don't make as many coins because I'm looking at all these different cards and trying to shout out prices that look good. That's because my 
my desire is to help you guys make coins and to have a successful ultimate team experience as successful as it can be and even if it comes at the expense of me having the best experience that i could have where i could be trading but instead i'm talking to you guys about it like that's that's what i want like i want to help you guys and that's a service really is what i want to provide but also be have fun and be entertaining uh at the same time and that, that's kind of the background of it right i have written down here in my notes like um how did i come up with the idea like that that is how i came up with the idea of I learned how to trade and I wanted to help other people who especially don't want to spend money on the game because we all know that this game tries to get us to spend money every single day and more than ever. And I've had so many people that have reached out to me and be like, oh, dude, I used to spend X amount of dollars on FIFA points or FC points every year. And now because of watching your videos, I don't need to spend those amount of money because I can spend way less or none at all and just staying on top of and learning a little bit about the market helps you so much in this game to stay ahead of the game and to know kind of where EA is coming from and their standpoint of releasing content and being smart with your coins and your fodder like we talk about all the time like that can change your ultimate team experience so much with just a little bit more effort like it seriously doesn't take that much it's crazy how a little bit of effort can make your game experience so much better for ultimate team so that's kind of the why I do what I do. Um, and I, I don't see that changing, right? I mean, um, I know there's other people that make market videos. Um, I know there's other people that make a lot of other types of videos in the ultimate team space. But for me, the market is where my passion is. And I'm not here to have the biggest YouTube channel I can possibly have. I'm just here to help you guys make as many coins as you can and have some fun along the way. Um, that's been my goal the entire time. Um, and some people are like, yo, it took you five years to get 100,000 subscribers? That's a long time. Like some people get 100,000 in like a year. And I'm like, yeah, but it's not about the numbers for me. It's just about teaching and informing and having fun um, uh, playing a game and um, inside of a sport that we all love so much. And really, I, I owe it all to you guys once again. Like, thank you guys for watching the videos, putting me in opportunities to do really cool things. I, I have, you know, remembering last year, during this time even, I was at the World Cup capture event meeting other YouTubers like Zway and AJ3 and Bateson and all those other really cool guys. And being partnered with EA, that's definitely one of the biggest perks. Um, and I know some of you guys are like, oh man, he's just an EA scum or whatever, but I, I don't feel like that's impacted me at all. I feel like I have understood more of their like business and the way that they work from being in the EA creator network, but it definitely does not stop me from saying things that negatively that need to change and, and providing feedback. Um, being somebody who just like, like is irate and like raging and like being like sometimes mean to, to people that I disagree with, like we disagree with EA sometimes, like that's just not me as a person or what I believe in. So that's why I probably seem super positive compared to other people is just, that's just, that's just who I am. It's not more so of me having my hands tied and like thinking that I can't say certain things. It's not it at all. But I mean, partnerships with like Head and Shoulders, Manscaped, HelloFresh, um, stuff that we've done in the streams for that. I, I, I would also you guys um, being, a part of the community watching the videos and uh yeah i'm just so appreciative and it honestly motivates me to work harder and to do more um when i see you guys supporting like you do and just to give back a little bit as we kind of wrap this up i don't want to talk for too long uh as i share my story and all this stuff but I do want to kind of share a couple, at least one announcement of something that's coming. Uh, a lot of you guys have asked about like merch or like anything TFA like brand related. There is some stuff in the works. I am looking at a couple of cool. I'm thinking. I'm looking at t. I'm looking at simple stuff, guys. I'm looking at T-shirts, but I'm not looking at like just a regular T-shirt. Like I'm looking at a a quality t-shirt something that you can wear not just because you want to look cool and you know you want it to say tfa or the foot accountant on it or have my face on it or whatever like i'm not looking for something like that like i'm looking for like something that you can wear that's like this is a shirt that is quality that is higher quality than other shirts and has either like a cool logo on it or maybe it's some sort of like thing from the stream something that's related to the foot account but like something that you can be okay with wearing out in public as well you know so there is some merch ideas that are coming i'll have more information and more news about that as well but also just to give back and it's honestly 
the support you guys have shown me over the years is mental and we give subs in the stream and you know um, we do provide a lot of tips and information and help but just you guys watching the videos has blessed me to allow this to be my full-time job and I do want to give away uh, some some money. I, I want to give you guys. I want to give you guys back. I want to bless some of you guys. I've been put in a great position because of you guys um, by watching these videos. You guys watching them. So I want to give back. I want to do a little bit of a giveaway off of this video. All you got to do, drop a thumbs up, comment down below uh, your favorite emoji or just com anything down below. Just comment. Um, I will pick five winners each from the comments down below that'll win a hundred dollars. And I will uh, get you guys hooked up, whether you want to spend that on FC points or whether you want to spend that on uh, some whatever you want. Um, you know, a lot of people give away FC points, but I'm like, I'd rather just give you the cold, hard cash because then you can spend it on whatever you want. Like if you run an RTG, you don't want to spend those FC points because then you feel like it, it dilutes your RTG or whatever. So uh, I think we'll do some of that in the comments down below and uh, I'll pick those giveaway winners within two to three weeks of this video going live but i'm looking over my notes really quick and I, I think i covered just about uh all that i wanted to i mean i could sit here and talk for hours about things that i've learned about youtube about going from zero to 100,000 subscribers uh, i could say more about my story i didn't even say that i'm married married to the mrs tfa um and yeah there's a lot more that i could unpack so if you want more videos like this more stories maybe even like a tfa podcast just tell me down below in the comments. I have no idea what a TFA podcast would look like, but I'd have interest in that because I just like, I like talking. I like sharing stories and um, that's kind of what this video was in itself. But again, I want to end off this video by just saying thank you for watching this, this channel and to getting me to a point where I can even have a cool plaque on the wall like this. Like uh, hitting 100,000 subscribers, like you're like, oh, do you get more money from that? No, you just get the cool plaque, you get the check mark, and it's more of just like a recognition thing in all honesty it doesn't change too much other than that um but again it's all thanks to you guys we're going forward and we're not changing anything um i'm always evolving and learning but um evolving <laughs> evolutions in fc um but you know the daily youtube videos are not going anywhere the streams are not going anywhere um so there's nothing along those lines that's changing but yeah I'm excited for uh, what is to come in the future, and I'm so thankful for you guys for supporting over these last few years. So without, for, uh, with that being said, I was gonna say without further ado, that's what you say at the beginning of a video, but with that being said, thank you guys for all the love. I appreciate you, and I'll see you in a video soon. Peace.